A very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, whatever place it is you're tuned on to the Life Signatures Radio. It has been a long series that we started and we are way, 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 way behind. In other words, there is so much to talk about this particular series. But before we can talk about that, this is a daily show. It is focused on purpose, productivity, and resilience, teaching, instructing, and um, inspiring uh, on those particular three subjects. So if you're looking for a virtual incubator for that, you'll find it on the Live Signatures Radio. If this podcast does make sense to you, please make sure you share it with as many people that you are in love with as possible, because if it does make sense to you, it will make sense to them. Probably you are just a conduit through which they can get to this message. They were looking forward to listening to it. If you wanted to give back, Please click on the link in the show notes and let's do this. We're going to continue today. In fact, we're going to come to a small closing because there's so much to talk about the strategic living episodes of the series that we're talking about. But today we're going to come to a close of explaining how does it look like? What are the facets of living strategically? And then tomorrow we'll go deeper on talking about why it is important. For today, let us finalize it. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I've been listening to a friend of mine. Let me not say a friend. This is a guy that we were in a small group, spiritual group together in Kenya long ago. And I was a leader to that particular group. And then I moved on to Uganda and so on and so forth. But I was listening to him speak about his passion. And this is helping people with their investments. And it is absolutely instructive. As you can imagine, that strikes a chord with me in the things that I am sharing with you. Because one of the things he said is that once you have taken care of your investments, it is easy to actually live a life of purpose. In other words, you're not necessarily focusing on the things that you're doing to actively give you cash or give you income. But the passive income that you've created over time enables you not to have your mind divided where you're not focusing on your purpose. So again, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to bring that subject up one of these uh, fine days. We're gonna, go, going to start getting practical with finances as far as purpose is concerned. And, and of course, there's a time we did share a very long series. We talked about uh, purpose to profit. We talked about the financial aspect of pursuing our, our purpose. But it's 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 refreshing to hear people talk about such particular stuff and today i want to share with you before i can go deeper i came across a particular clip that i just want to play with you because i uh, play for you because we're talking about living a strategic life and sometimes when you focus on some things other things that are within the realm of what you're talking about or what you're focusing on start appearing to you that's why I came across uh, how I came across this particular clip that I want to play for you. So check it out. I'll say now what I want you to do is I want you to write a letter to your future self. It's going to be delivered in five years from now. I thought this was a common practice because I've been doing it from a very early age. But apparently it's not to write a letter to your future self. Yeah, I can't. Um, I mean, maybe once or twice. And so I'll let you know a little secret. The change occurs not when you receive the letter, but when you actually write it. Because you're actually thinking in a way about future you in a way that you normally don't, which is who's going to receive this letter? Where do I want them to be? And what I find more often than not is people come up to me afterwards and I go, to write? I never even thought 
who do I want to be in five or 10 years? Like, what's that arc of what I want to kind of connect to? What am I optimizing for? How do I make myself better in that way? So I want, I want to make sure people understand that if you can't look at a photo of yourself aged, the very least write a letter to your future self. And what does the letter include? Dear Andy, dear Ari, and then whatever you want to put in. This is a one-to-one private conversation with your future self. What are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your desires? What are you afraid of? What do you want to see happen? Because until you put out there, you can't be it if you can't see it, right? You have to actually visualize what that is and putting in not not the negative, but what you really want to see aspirationally in that letter now starts creating a, a roadmap to getting there. And I'll say now what I want you to do. Is- Sorry. So I got this from uh, Facebook from a guy called Andrew Huberman and uh he, he was interviewing some he was interviewing somebody and uh, the topic of the day was scripting your future protocol and the science it must have been a very long episode uh, that uh, they did uh, right there we're talking about the same thing we're talking about living a strategic life how in the world does it look like okay of course this guy andrew and his uh, host they were talking about uh, writing a letter to your future self which is basically being strategic because strategy or strategic living is about the long term it's about the future it's about the life that has yet to to be the desires that we want for the future we're starting to script them today and the good thing that they have said is that the more you put your thoughts to it the more it is easy for it to become a reality and we said in our episodes that it is easy for us to be short termist in other words we don't think about tomorrow we don't think about the future the only thing we do is to live and firefight for today after we fire fought for today we eat the three square meals that we've had after eating the three square meals that we've had we sleep we repeat that process for years that is not strategic living but how does it look like number one you've got to be living with purpose every one of us came into this earth with purpose the thing that we've got, we've got to do on ourselves is to discover it. Not just discover it, but own it. Take ownership. This is me. This is my purpose. This is why I was born. And then do it. As in deploy it. That means that whether money is coming or money is not coming, you are doing what you are called to do. Of course, I've, you, you need to balance it with what my friend uh, Mushiri talked about. And I'm going to do something about that, by the way. It only talked about investment. That you've got to invest so, so, so much so that you have passive income, so that you can be able to deploy your purpose. And that is being strategic. Secondly, you've got to set and achieve long-term goals. Whether these goals are financial, whether these goals are spiritual, whether these goals are mental, uh, you know, uh, whether these goals are business, these goals are physical, these goals are relationships, whatever. The all nine years, we normally talk about the wheel of life in coaching. Where are we focused on and what goals are we focusing on? If we are going to live a strategic life, goals are key. They are important. But the caution here that I keep saying, you don't just jump off of nowhere and start writing goals. I want a blue car, I want a red car, I want a house, four bedroomed house. No, we've got to identify the why. That is where the purpose comes in. Then the purpose is buttressed by these long term goals, number two. And then number three, these goals will be always be done and pursued through intentional decision making because every waking day we are living the most distracted of lives since adam and therefore intentionality and intentional decision making is going to help us to say this one is urgent but it's not important i'm not going to do it today i don't need a table tennis table today i can get the table tennis table not from the principle but i can invest that particular amount of money i can create a vehicle like uh, robert kiyosaki will tell you you want to buy a house build an asset let the asset generate the income and then build a house wow number three it was intentional decision making number four it is about maximizing the resources that we have what is the most important resource you you and i have time 
We don't have 200 years to be alive. We cannot recycle our years. We cannot uh, repurpose our years. Okay, that's controversial to say, uh, even as I'm thinking about it. But we cannot repurpose our years. The only way you can repurpose your years is to realize, hey, wait a minute, I am 50 and I've done absolutely nothing. The best time to plant a tree was 50 years ago, but the next best time is today. So let me draw a line in the sand today and start repurposing my life, which means we are maximizing the resources we have, our time, our talent, our treasures. Number four. Number five, we've got to make sure that we're building resilience and adaptability. We've got to be, be flexible. We've got to anticipate that we're going to fail. I'm reading Elon Musk, and one of the things that is always in his crosshairs, always in his mind, is that there's a possibility of failure. And that failure, by the way, is the one that makes him to, to do course correction. Of course, later on he was interviewed and he said, I'd rather learn by succeeding than, than learn by failing. But he knows exactly what he's talking about. He'd rather fail and course correct than not do anything. That's where resilience and adaptability comes in as number five. Number six, yesterday we talked about living with urgency, living with focus, and living with balance. But today... Something that I've talked about in these uh, episodes for a long, long time. I talked about legacy. There was a series I did on legacy. If we're going to live a strategic life, then we've got to know that we are creating a lasting legacy. In other words, we've got to be thinking, of course, there's a time Oprah Winfrey was talking to her mentor, Maya Angelou, I nearly forgot that name. And she was saying, perhaps the secondary school I've built in South Africa will be my lasting legacy. And Maya Angelou kind of rebuked and said that you have no idea what your legacy is going to be like. You don't know. You do you. You do whatever is in your heart today. Pursue whatever is in your passion today. Live strategically today. Then once you're gone, the legacy will speak for itself. But the legacy never speaks if there was no focus on it. And I know it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because sometimes you cannot be so gung-ho focusing on legacy. What's my legacy? What's my legacy? No. As in just sell yourself to your purpose. Sell yourself to what matters to you today. And go for it. That way you're actually taking care of that particular legacy. So strategic living often includes the considerations of the impact. See, I talked about impact, I talked about contribution, I talked about legacy, I talked about um, the, the, the transformation that happens because we live, because we are alive. So living with a long-term perspective, naturally, it leads us to thinking about how can we be of help? How can we be transformative? How can we be people of legacy? Where is it in terms of our personal achievements that impact society? I mean, benefit society, benefit communities that, that we, we were coming from, and so on and so forth. So it is, it is about that. It's about the influence that we have in, in our lives. We cannot just be thinking about me and my red car, me and my Apple phone, me and, and my iMac, me and my podcasting studio, me and my five-bedroom house. A lot of people think about that. That's not life of legacy. Nobody, you don't hear people being remembered. Oh, that's the guy who built a house. That's the guy who had a big house in the in the village. It's, people don't remember things that we did for ourselves. Legacy is not about things we do for ourselves. In fact, I would say, I would dare say that strategic living is about the things we do that impact society. And those things are rooted in why we are existing, which is our purpose. So strategic individuals think about their actions today that will shape their future and the lives of those around them. This may include leaving a financial legacy you know, for family members, or building a business, building a library in the village. I've always dreamt of building a library in my village. You know, building a computer lab in my school, uh, primary school where I came from and, and so on. Building these life signatures universities where we are offering alternative education, so to speak. And we are doing education from the angle of what are people, who, what are people gifted with? What is their purpose? Why did they ca come to do? Why did God intend for them to do? And then we build schools and universities that are going to exemplify and draw out these particular purposes. That is a legacy. 
So the focus on legacy produces a deeper sense of purpose and a deeper sense of direction. And it's about more than just my green car or my green card or my, uh, what are they, my house and my vacations and all those things. Then there's nothing wrong with that, that stuff. But that's not the focus of life. That's a byproduct of living a life of purpose. It is not the, the, the priority, neither is it the focus. Elon Musk, one day, he was told he is the richest man on the face of the earth. He tweeted, he said, how strange. First tweet. Second tweet was like, okay, go back to work. This man, the focus was not to be a millionaire. The focus was never to be the richest man. The focus was the legacy. If Elon Musk, God forbid, dropped dead today, he's one of the people who has impacted this world like nobody else has in our present generation. And the lasting legacy is living is because of living a strategic life. And he's not that particularly special. You cannot judge Elon, you cannot judge your life by the basis of what Elon Musk is doing. Your strategic existence, your strategic life, your strategic focus is totally different from his strategic fo- focus and his strategic existence. We cannot judge, we cannot compare and compete. That is not the point. So those are the seven areas in which you can exemplify your life living strategically. Tomorrow we're going to start talking about why is it important to do that. Until then, Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.